This is Greg Stalker presenting information about the lactate shuttle. Before we get into the theory, let's meet the man who invented it. This is Dr. George Brooks, father of the lactate shuttle hypothesis. Dr. Brooks first proposed his theory in the mid-1980s, and since then, it has grown wildly, with ongoing research continuing today. He developed the theory from isotope tracer studies on rats, dogs, and humans, where a tracer was placed on lactate and then followed as it moved throughout the various tissues of the body. Lactate formation begins in the cytoplasm under the anaerobic or oxygen-independent metabolic pathway called glycolysis or glycogenolysis. Glycolysis refers to glucose catabolism and contains 10 reactions. Glycogenolysis refers to glycogen catabolism, which bypasses the first reaction and shares the remaining nine. Both end in the formation of two molecules of pyruvate. During glycolysis, hydrogen is released and picked up by nicotinamide adenine dionucleotide, or NAD, becoming NADH and goes to the electron transport chain. When insufficient oxygen is available to accept hydrogen at the end of the electron transport chain, NADH backs up, combines with pyruvate, and is converted to lactate. This is a reversible reaction catalyzed by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, or LDH. This is one of Dr. Brooks's original illustrations of the lactate shuttle. According to Brooks, lactate is in constant production and circulation, shown by the lactate present in the artery and the vein. An example of this comes from the red blood cell, which has no mitochondria and relies solely on glycolysis for its energy demands. As lactate is being produced, it can be oxidized by different fibers of the same muscle or be released into the blood. This illustration shows the circulation of lactate between the various tissues of the body. Lactate enters or exits cells using a facilitated transport system that moves along a concentration gradient from high to low and is carried by a network of monocarboxylate transport proteins, or MCTs. Approximately 75% of the lactate in circulation is taken up and oxidized by type 1 and cardiac muscle fibers. The remaining approximate 25% of the lactate in circulation is taken up by the liver, entering a process shown here and known as the Cori cycle. Once in the liver, lactate goes through gluconeogenesis and becomes glucose, which may circulate in the blood or be stored as glycogen. During and after exercise, storage is less prevalent due to an elevated catabolic hormone profile of glucagon and catecholamines. The introduction of Dr. Brooks's revolutionary theory shocked the scientific community by challenging the classic view of lactate as a metabolic waste product. After decades of further research, the lactate shuttle hypothesis holds firm and contains many new developments, including support for the use of lactate by the brain as an energy substrate. Although implications of the lactate shuttle hypothesis on athletic performance are yet to be, as research continues, I believe there will be more evidence uncovered that illustrates lactate as the missing link between anaerobic and aerobic metabolic pathways.